Hey, welcome. It's attorney Mark Blaine here. This is my vlog. I was going to do this video uh, on the beach, maybe do a beach walk with you and talk about California lane splitting and how the insurance company can use that against you in your in your case. So we'll get we'll get talking about that in just a minute. But uh, this is actually a good time to do this because it's uh, almost sunset and I'm here at um, Swami's Beach in Encinitas which is a really, really nice beach. So uh, yeah, we'll just kind of do a little quick walk down the beach, talk about lane splitting. Fun fact, Swami, Swami's Beach is a real popular uh, surf, surf spot because uh, there's a break out here that um, is real popular with the surfers. And uh, it's been, it's, world, it's known worldwide for uh, having great waves, and especially in the winter time. And uh, there's also a pretty cool little uh, ashram up in the cliffs here uh, called, it was named after Bara Manhasa Yagananda and they built an ashram for that yogi in 1937. It's called the Self-Realization Temple. It's got a meditation garden so it's pretty cool. If you're ever in San Diego, you should go visit. But anyway, let's get to the video on this. All right, so California lane splitting, what is it? Uh, it's basically when a motorcyclist in California can ride down the white dividing line on a highway or roadway, as long as the traffic around the motorcyclist is going uh, uh, slower than the motorcyclist and it's done safely. California is the only state in the United States that allows it to be legal. And so it's unique. Um, a lot of people, especially older people, they don't like it. It is very scary when you're not expecting it. Um, the motorcyclist comes out of nowhere and it's loud and they're going between cars and sometimes they're doing it unsafely. Now for this video, most, I'll, I'll say it, most motorcyclists are law-abiding citizens. They obey the safe driving rules uh, for all of us on the freeways. But there's 5%, 10% bad apples that actually don't and that makes it really difficult. Let me adjust my lighting makes it really difficult for uh, for those that do and it makes it right for the defense to exploit to defend the case because they know that those same people who don't like lane splitting are the ones that are going to be facing you on your jury for your injury case and they'll subtly manipulate and even infer that maybe you were doing something unsafe on your motorcyclist on your motorcycle especially if it's lane splitting go figure so, and I've seen it time and time again. I do a ton of motorcycle crash cases here in San Diego, Southern California, and it's not isolated. This is something, because think about it. For a motorcycle case, there's a lot at stake. For a motorcycle case, there is a lot at stake because injuries tend to be higher. The chances of you getting more invasive medical care as a result of a motorcycle crash, it's, it's, it's very, very high. So there's a lot of pressure for the insurance companies to defend harshly these cases and infer unsafe maneuvers or uh, that you were doing something wrong. And they'll look at you and your motorcycle. And if you have anything that looks with, uh, unsafe on your motorcycle, skull and bones, decal stickers, or if your motorcycle was like a speed rocket, not a recumbent bike or a chopper or a cruiser, they're gonna use that against you if they can. Okay, just know that. Real quickly, if you can to combat that, really it's actually a good idea for anyone who's riding a motorcycle, get safety certificates. Get, you know, do more, go above and beyond the mere uh, DMV standards of care, which is, you know, passing your DMV test to get your motorcycle's license. Uh, get, go above and beyond. Look at the Motorcycle Association of, uh, I forget if they have a website. You can get, you can get certified. It is gonna make you a better motorcyclist for everybody on the roadway and then if you ever get in a wreck and they try to say you're unsafe or something we can bring that in as evidence to show how you are a safe motorcyclist perhaps maybe you only ride your motorcycle at night oh, I'm sorry in <laughs> not night but in the daytime that makes it even more safe maybe you're a kind of a uh, person that uh, only rides it during certain errands certain times of day certain days of the week you know because you know there's there's a lot at stake when you're riding a motorcycle let's face it you get in a crash, 
likelihood of you getting a surgery or some sort of ligament integrity tear is greatly increased because you don't have the protection of a car. It's another reason why it makes motorcycle cases unique and that makes it right for exploitation. The more unique your case is, the more the defense has an opportunity to create confusion, call you, call you unsafe or doing something wrong. And they'll try to do everything they can to put attention on you. And my job is to put all the attention on the rule breaker, the one that put you in the situation to begin with. But for motorcycle collision cases, game's on for anything because they have a lot at stake to defend, like we talked about earlier. So keep that in mind. So lane splitting actually, uh, it wasn't codified in the vehicle code in California until recently, believe it or not. California has had a long, long tradition with motorcyclists. Fun fact, uh, ever since 1901, when the Indian motorcycle was uh, first made, and that was followed up by Harley Davidson in 1903, there was a rage of motorcycle enthusiasm crossing this country in the early 20th century from the Midwest all the way to California. And not surprisingly so for California. I mean, we got great weather, Mediterranean climate, We've got open, vast highways. We've got lots of riding space. We have national, we have over 300 national state parks. We've got over 280 miles of coastline. I mean, this is just one example. And you know, being free on a motorcycle and wanting to ride and be open, well, that's a big part of this culture. And so another fun fact, uh, actually motor domes opened up, speed domes in 1904 in Playa del Rey, California and they would go on these tracks, go around circles, and then one in Beverly Hills opened, I think in 1928, if I remember correctly. And so, the war, World War II came, and then there was modifications of the bikes, and then movies came. Hollywood came to California on the motorcyclists, and what they did is they actually um, created more of a frenzy with motorcycle. And so it's no doubt that California is the only state in the United States that allows this maneuver of lane splitting and if it's done safely it's great but like I was saying earlier you know it wasn't codified check out the sunset it wasn't codified until recently and the CHP before it became a vehicle code I think it's 21 uh, 21658.1 vehicle code California you can look it up um, they got a little bit of flack because they were actually giving guidelines on lane splitting and they're a law enforcement agency. Can't do that, can't mix the two branches. So what they did is that they made it law with uh, California Vehicle Code just a few years ago and they gave the power to the CHP, California Highway Patrol, to give guidelines, safety guidelines, on how to uh, safely lane split in California. And quickly, to do it right, Lane splitting, it's, it's uh, recommended not to do when traffic around you is more than uh, 30 miles per hour. And if you do it, in fact, uh, CHP recommends you don't do it. But how many times are you going down a California freeway and some idiot on a speed rocket is going 95 miles an hour between two cars in the number one lane? It happens all the time. And it's not talked about. You know, when it's talked about, it's talked about when you're at trial for your injury case and they're going to try to tell you, tell the jury that you were doing something like that. That's what it's talked about. But it's also talked about in this video, which is why I'm doing it. So, um, and the CHP also recommends you don't do it and other than the number one and two lane. That's the lane from your far left, number one, the fast lane. The second lane to that is number two, it goes out to your right, three, four, and five. So if you're going to do it, do it in number one and two lane. Do it when there's uh, traffic around you is no lo more than 30 miles per hour. Also, you can't go more than 10 miles per hour than traffic around you. That's the other recommendation for the CHP. Again, when's that done? It's actually done, you know, 55, 65 miles an hour all the time. It's a dangerous maneuver when it's at high speeds. It's a safe maneuver when it's at low speeds. That's when it's safe. And that's what we all want. We want safe maneuvers on the roadway, especially with a uh, motorcycle motorcycles being on this road you know so it's a good thing but uh, unfortunately the bad apples in the bunch kind of ruin that so again if you want to if you uh, 
are going to ride a motorcycle in California, you got to know the law. Do it safely. And I see it all the time on the freeways where people are lane splitting and the traffic's going less than 30 miles per hour. It's done safely all the time. And lane splitting is illegal in all the other states. California's the only one that allows it. Uh, but as of a few months ago, nine states have petitioned to uh, allow lane splitting to be legal. But again, we know about the culture with California and how it's always been, you know, pro lane splitting. But in all other parts of the world it's done, Europe, Asia, and the whole goal with lane splitting is to alleviate traffic. That's the whole goal. And it works well when it's done safely, like I said. So just some things to think about, you know, lane splitting, yeah, it's legal, but it can be dangerous for not only you and other people on the uh, freeway. Um, so you gotta do it careful, be careful. All we want is safe, you know, we, we all depend on the driving rules around us. We all depend on everyone on the freeway around us to follow the same driving rules. The rule of reciprocity is alive and well in these cases. And it, you know, motorcycle cases just are right pickings for a defense to try to make it look like you were unsafe. So those are my thoughts for this vlog. Pretty cool, sunset. Um, give me your thoughts, share comments below. Um, I've got a book on this. You can get it on my website, blainlaw.com. It's a motorcycle, California Motorcycle Collision Legal Survival Book. Just published it this year. It's got tons of information. I mean, I let it loose on the defense. There's like 50 defense tactics in there on these, just these cases. And it's not talked about enough. So if you want a copy, if you've been injured, or if you know one who's been injured in a car crash or a motorcycle crash case, give me a call. More than happy to see if I can help you uh, on that case and, and do what should be done on it. Not blame you if you didn't do anything right or wrong, you know, and, and get your the value of the case that you deserve because someone wasn't following the safe driving rules that day. All right, you guys take care. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that vlog. I enjoyed making it for you. And again, if you need that book download, it's right here. Motorcycle collision case. Uh, legal survival book. Just go to my website, blainlaw.com. Get yourself a free download if you're a California resident or have been injured in a uh, motorcycle crash case. This book's for you. It's packed with information, and uh, I hope uh, it helps you in your case. All right, that's it. Take care and uh, be strong. Bye bye.